Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, turn it on. Hi, guys. Um, I'm here to talk about implementing CIA best practices metrics uh, in your own, your own work, your own life. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what it really means, too. Um, at first, I wanted to talk about um, chaos and just, just a short thing. I really appreciate uh, the chaos community, uh, what everyone's done with it, and what it's done for me, too. Um, these, are, these guys are my faculty advisors, but I put them before my name because they're above me in the chain. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. So, um, so I'm going to talk about badging first. Because uh, everybody might not know what the software badging uh, means. So what do people think about software badging? What does it mean to you? Any takers? What? We just learned a little bit about it. Yeah. That's true, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just going to get some opinions, but... Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, got, I have some examples of some software badges here. Uh, this is a project that I just pulled up called GG Stats Plot. Um, they have a lot of different badges that you can use um, from uh, on their on their website to see more about their project. Uh, it's it's kind of a, an, an idea of where their project is in, in lots of different um, lots of different angles. I guess is a good way to put it. But um, this is just an example of software badging. It's um, something you put up on your re repository and get more inf and give more information to people about it. So. This also takes us to Core Infrastructure Initiative. It's a Linux Foundation project, and something interesting about it is that it started after Heartbleed happened. Um, so it was announced pretty soon after that. Um, and their goal is to fund and support for repositories and software and core infrastructure for the internet and information systems. Uh, so this is the Core Infrastructure Initiative like basic, you know, idea inventory, but um, they have something called the best practices badging program. It's something that I like to call a thousand foot view of the project. It's a very broad, very open, um, like it's a number that tells you, are they following best practices? And we absolutely, absolutely know, like we just talked about ethics, best practices is kind of a part of that. And we, um, we, we, we work on best practices because we want to follow a certain guideline. And Missiana talked about that a little bit too. And we want to also know why it's helpful to explore these best practices. And this picture on the right is just an example of projects that are associated with Core Infrastructure Initiative's badging program. They have badges themselves. So I'm going to pull up a picture of um, Augur, and this is an example of the CII badge in context. Um, this is one of the Chaos projects, and they've got their own CII badge showing that, showing that they're 83% to being at a passing level. There's also silver and gold that can indicate different levels of um, compliance with CII best practices. So I actually took some work and um, put this into Augur in that box in the bottom right there. And this is just an example of an implementation of the CIA best practices metric. So this is, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Apache Syncope, Syncope. But it's um, something that is at a passing level with CIA best practices. It shows when it happened and what the user ID is. That's a very simple implementation. The API actually returns, th there's an API that I get this information from, and it actually returns a lot of information. So we can work with that at any time. And let's talk a little bit about why this box is incredibly important to the implementation of specifically risk metrics in, uh, in any software package that is looking at those metrics in, in, in detail. So um, I, have, I have kind of some information here about why this is important. CII has their badging program site. And we can explore that too later, but um, you can go there. But if you want to have all your data in one place, which is very nice and efficient, then you have to, um, you pretty much have to put it with all your other metrics. You can take our badging data and put it on a dashboard. 
so that we have that we have this available because if you, really honestly if I was looking at metrics for a project I wouldn't go and look at go to CIA's website look them up and buy an ID and then find them every time I needed that so the big sentence I have here is integration is crucial to the efficient consumption of best practices metrics and I think that is very true for this for this situation and for others as well and that way we can really use those metrics um, I wanted to open some extra time um, to ask, how would you add a CIA badge to your project, especially in metrics projects? Does anybody have any ideas? Yeah, and that, a lot of that is just uh, the progress process of embedding it in your README. It's um, pretty. You just request to have a review of your um, project with the CIA, and they um, can get you a badge to work with. Uh, uh, go ahead. Is, is that just derived from Augur? Oh, sorry. No, it's not a project of Augur. Oh, um, I can show you something real quick that shows um, the best practices. Um, so I have it pulled up here. And this is the CIA kind of website that I was talking about earlier where you can look things up by ID, name, things like that. And I am on the page that we can find Augur right here. So this is their badge. You can embed that onto your repository from any area. And basically they use a lot of um, checking uh, you put in some information yourself and they use a lot of checking to um, to find out like if it follows um, licensing best practices if it has um, if it has information like a readme and install document things like that I uh, honestly not, I'm not sure of that I'm just thinking about I think that the, the best practice is every time you get a badge, it's going to be on their public database. But I think the badging criteria are publicly available. Yeah. You could implement a behind the scenes to get the passing over. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. So, man, I have a question. The, the color that renders on, on your badge, mm -hmm. on your project, is that assigned by the results of the survey, or is it, is it like evaluated every time you do the code check-in, or is it a manual process, or what what is it that actually determines your compliance, do you know? Uh, I'm not sure of that either. I'm pretty sure it's automated for most of it. Uh, that, there, that there's there's sometimes comments left on the on the not passing or something like that, but uh, I think a lot of the process is, is is automated and then maybe checked later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they they seem to update them pretty often because the last updated is uh, normally in the last couple months. Um, for for maybe that's when people report that they need it updated, but in the in the most recent ones, it's been last updated at the same time as um, as integrated. But the the bigger projects will have last updated from the last month or two. Matt, do you know how many people are using this right now? I can tell you how many repos there are. Okay. Um, there are currently about a little over three thousand. Um, and a lot of them are small repos. A lot of them are based, their, their URL is just GitHub, they don't have their own website or anything. But a lot of the times people just use it to check their own project. Um, like, like you said, for your private repos, uh, to be able to see how well they're following best practices. And then the majority of them are maybe 12 or 19% between that range. What kind of project do you think would be best for this? Would it just be any project, or is there any like, specific type of project that? They seem to be pretty comprehensive. They cover a, 
a wide amount of um, use cases, by what I can tell. They have a, they have, um, a lot of Apache stuff is on there. Uh, they, I, I see a lot of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript programs. I, I see Python implementations. There's a lot of different kind of stuff you can find on there, Jupyter stuff. Um, stuff that, I'm just talking about primary languages, but they have all kinds of different languages on them. And most of it is more of a, pro, more of a process of like looking at licensing or um, whether or not they follow certain practices and how they put their, doc, put their um, documents into folders and things like that. Who do you think is the primary audience of these beds? Is it the project team itself? Is it somebody who is evaluating whether or not to put this project into practice? Yeah, that's a good thing to ask questions of the community about. Uh, but I am not sure who exactly is consuming it the most. It, it's kind of like, if you look at a, a, a Black Duck badge or a, or, a, or a CI badge or something like that, it's just a good indicator of the health of the project or the risk of the project for that matter. I can also speak to that. There are several foundations starting to make it a requirement for their projects to leave incubation to have the best practices all in place. So it's just a way for the project to put themselves to see are we doing all the good things. Yeah, and the core infrastructure initiative definitely has um, it has it down when it comes to the best practices. So they're a very good group to follow for that. Any more questions, comments, heckling? <laughs> okay, well, I think that's it for me then. A quick presentation.